Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the final thing uh, that I promised I would do um, is show you uh, this idea of clatter, uh, which is a, something that's very much based on this very simple engine that we've just built. Um, and it relies on being able to drop a bunch of sounds and have them dynamically load into buffers all at the same time. And I think this is where, you you know, this, this is something else that I can show you quite usefully, I think. At the moment, uh, we started off by having uh, the buffer buffers automatically filled as soon as you load a patch, which is great and it's very useful, provided you know that those are the sounds that you want to use throughout your session. So, for example, if you were to, um, again, ally this whole model with the step drum sequencer that we made right at the outset, and I'm going to leave you to figure out how to do that because otherwise I'll be showing you everything that you can do and hand in. Um, but, you know, that, that assumes that you're going to have a series of percussion sounds which are going to remain the same because, you know, they, they'll presumably um, refer to uh, general MIDI um, sounds. But what happens if you want to have a, you know, to drag and drop a bunch of sounds that you, um, you, you know, you just want to load into a series of buffers and use this same model to play them? Uh, well, in fact, we've just made something which uh, we're going to use again. This whole um, count uh, and pack into a root object and then output into um, a series of other objects. We're going to use this kind of model to load a series of our sort of custom samples. So the next bit I've got to do is to move all of these out of the way. And the idea is, I don't know, I can't even remember whether I've told you this already. The idea is to replace the sounds that are currently in the buffers with some new ones um, and user defined ones that are you can drag and drop into there. So what would I need to do if I wanted to uh, replace one item in, the, in, say, the top buffer, so sound one? I'd want to add a uh, drop file object, which I'll pop in there, and then run that through uh, an object which enabled me to replace the item in the buffer with something new. So I'd use a replace uh, message with a dollar one after it. So basically, I drag a sound into there, um, and it runs through this replace message and uh, replace prepends that um, that message, and so uh, buffer will load the new sound. But what I want to do is to have uh, maybe to drop a variety of different sounds onto uh, this drop file object and have each one allocated a different buffer. That would make drag and dropping a bunch or loading a, a, a series of files um, kind of in quick succession or basically immediately. It would make the whole process very easy and it would make it a very nice user experience for your end user. Um, so that's basically what we want to do. And this idea of being able to allocate uh, a different sound or different uh, file name to a different to each different buffer is the principle is exactly the same as what we're doing over here. So we're in this case we are sending a new uh, buffer name to different players, and here we want to send a new message to or different file name to different players. Uh, so we're going to use the same engine, basically. I'm going to move this down here and I'll get rid of hit this. And I'm, again, I'm going to build it because it's uh, easier to do that and then explain it. We will use a trigger object in exactly the same way. We will use count in exactly the same way, but this time we're going to count to 24 because we've got 24 buffers down here. And then we'll run that through a pack object again. This time, however, instead of just two items, the 0 and the S that we've got down here, we're going to put in a 0 and replace. So that term will be familiar. We've just used it. Um, we know that that's the thing that replaces the sound in the buffer. And then the S. So I'll connect those up. And then connect 
that to there. So looking at this, there are the three items, but remember that this middle inlet, because it doesn't have anything going to it, the, the middle item in that list is always going to be the same. It's always going to be replaced. So if we have, say, counter counting, I don't know, number three, sending the number three into here, it will be three, replace, and then whatever is sent from the, whatever, whatever the third item is in the, the list of files that you've dropped on there. Um, this replace thing will always be the same. And so now all we need to do is to add a root object with 24 numbers in it. Oops. There we go. And connect that up. And then do our pretty parabola thing again, which I will probably zoom through so that you don't have to watch it all. Okay, so that's that. Uh, actually, very easy to move these along a bit. And that's it. Um, so we just need to uh, get some files with, let's find a, another 24 sound files. Well, I happen to have got some ready. And so um, we'll drag in 24 Elgar P Bang, so Elgar Room at the Birmingham University. Uh, piano Bang is what those refer to. Drag those in. Actually, maybe we should see... Oh, you'll hear in a minute. Drag them in, and they've now replaced what was in those buffers before. You can't really tell from that, but they have. Uh, and then I can... You'll hear that each note... Uh, there we go. So each one has a different sound. Voila! Um, and then uh, I could do that with another set as well. So I'll use Afrelgar. So this was some sort of xylophone instrument like things in the Elgar room again. And you'll hear those ones again. Uh, so that's that. Um, a, quite, hopefully an engine that kind of makes sense. Um, can be used in a variety of ways and um, uh, is very, very useful. Um, so there we are. Uh, and really this is almost exactly the same engine. I mean, the, the, one of the reasons why I, I built this engine for this thing called Clatter that I've made uh, is because I like the idea of different... Well, I got a bit sick of hearing the same bass drum every time I hit a particular note on a, a MIDI keyboard, for example. Um, uh, MIDI samplers always have the same sound for particular instruments. But of course that's not the case in real life, because you might hit them slightly differently and they will sound slightly different every time you hit them. Um, so, uh, if, as in the case of the... Um, the piano bang thing here. Uh, you have a variety of different recordings of hits that all sound very, very slightly different. When you play them back, it sounds very much more natural than hitting the same, say, snare every single time. Which I thought was quite appealing. Um, so that's kind of handy.